What's up my pre-calc people? I'm Michael Pritchick. In this video, we're gonna tackle AP pre-calculus topic 2.4, manipulation of exponential functions. Now that you know what an exponential function is from topic 2.3, what we wanna do here is talk about how we can manipulate an algebraic function using, well, our exponent rules. So there's only two big exponent rules that you have to remember, but we're gonna use them in reverse. Kind of makes the problems a little bit tricky, but after looking at a couple examples in this video, I think you're gonna find it really, really simple. So let's start tackling some problems right now. So to understand the manipulation of exponential functions, we first have to know the general form of exponential function, which is of course f of x equals a times b raised to the x. As long as the x is in the exponent, you got yourself an exponential function. Now, I'll remind you real quick that the a is the initial value when x equals zero. If I do b raised to zero, that's always gonna be one. Anything raised to zero is one, one times a is a. And then b is of course what we call the growth or decay factor. Now, Anytime the input value x is in the exponent, you have an exponential function. But if it is not in the general form that we just saw, a times b dx, we would like to manipulate the function so that it is. Now, in order to do this, you have to recall three really, really important exponent rules. The first one is that when you have base b to the m times the same base b to the n, you are allowed to add those exponents. So if you have the same base and they're being multiplied, you can add the exponents together. Now it's important that you understand that this rule works in both directions, right? If we have the same base, we could bring it together with one base if we add the exponents, but we could also separate if we have b raised to the m plus n, we could go the other direction and separate that into two bases, b to the m times b to the n. Let me just show you a quick example. So if I have b to the n plus 3, I could separate this as b to the n times b to the 3. Again, I'm just using the rule backwards. Or even if I have a minus, if I have minus 2, this still works, right? Technically, a subtraction is the addition of a negative. So this would still work. I'm just going to do b to the n times b to the negative 2. Again, and most kids are comfortable going in this direction where we say, oh, just add the exponents. n plus negative 2 is n minus 2. All we're trying to say is that you could go in the other direction as well. Now, the second rule is called the power rule. If we have a power to a power, if we have a base b raised to the power of m raised to the power of n, we can multiply those powers. So we still have the same base b. The b stays the same. The base doesn't change. But now my power is m times n. And again, most kids are good at doing this in the first direction, where we say we have b squared to the third. Most kids remember the rule. Oh, that's b to the sixth. Yes. But I can also do this in reverse. So if I have b to the 3x, that's multiplication. Multiplication splits to double power. So I could rewrite this as b to the third, all raised to the x. Now it also works with division. So imagine if I had b raised to the x divided by 3. Now technically, x divided by 3, dividing by 3 is multiplying by the reciprocal. That's x times 1 third. So I could also break this apart from b to the 1 third, raised to the x. All I'm doing is I'm separating my powers. I'm just, I'm going in the, re I'm doing the rule in reverse. I have something times something, and I'm just separating those two as double powers, a power to a power. And of course, the last rule that you need to remember is what a negative exponent does. A negative exponent simply moves you to the denominator where you can become a positive exponent. So b to the negative n is 1 over b to the n. And a very simple example of this would be b to the negative 3. That's going to be 1 over b to the positive 3. Negative exponents do not make you negative. They just typically make you smaller. All right, now let's actually show you how we could utilize these rules that we just quickly went over to manipulate exponential functions to get them into the form a times b to the x. All right, so here's our first example. Now, we have 3 times 2 raised to the x plus 4, but we want a times b to the x. We don't want an x plus 4, we just want x. So what we have to do is we have to use our rules in reverse. So the, right now, the 3 is just a constant. I'm going to leave it out in front. But this is addition, right? Addition says that I could separate those as two separate bases. So I have 2 to the x times 2 to the 4th. That was that first rule that we went over. When you have the same base, you can add the exponents. All I'm just doing is going in reverse. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and put the two to the X in the back because that's where the B to the X is in the back. And then I have three times two to the fourth. Now two to the fourth is just a number, right? It's 16. So I have three times 16 times two raised to the X. And again, I could also do three times 16. That's just basic math and I get 48. So I get 48 times two raised to the X. So now I am in that A times B raised to the X form. A is 48, B is two. In the original form, A is not three, B is not two. Well, technically the B is still two, yes. But the A value was not three. So it's really important to understand how I manipulated this exponential function to get to the form I like, A times B raised to the X. Let's do another one so you can see how this is done more. So once again, five is just my constant. I'm going to leave it alone right out in front, but I have X minus two. Well, subtraction is just addition of a negative. So I could separate that to three to the X times three to the negative two. I'm just separating it to the two bases, two separate bases. Now in the back, I'm going to put the three to the X. That's of course my B value raised to the X, which is what I want in that generic form. And then out here, I have five times three to the negative two. Now three to the negative two is just a number. If you don't know it, you could use your calculator, but I hope you know that what a negative exponent does. We literally just went over this. So three to the negative two is going to be one over three to the positive two, which everybody knows is nine. So that's five times one ninth times three raised to the X and five times one ninth. Come on, you don't need to calculate for that. That's five ninths. So now I'm in the form that we like, that generic form with my A value being five ninths, my B value being three, and I have just X as my exponent. So hopefully that was fairly simple. All right, let's try another one. Now this time I got decimals, so I'm probably gonna have to go to a calculator to help me out a little bit here. I might not be able to readily know these values on the top of my head, but I wanna show you how the same rules apply, even though they're decimals. So the 7.5 is a constant, I'm gonna leave it alone. I have 1.8 to the negative three, and then 1.8 to the X. All I did was I separated the subtraction which is just addition of a negative, into two separate bases, 1.8 to the x and 1.8 to the negative 3. And the order you put them doesn't matter because it's multiplication. The order of multiplication doesn't matter. Now, this right here is a number. Now, listen, I don't know what that is on top of my head, right? I know that it would be 1 over 1.8 to the third, but I don't know what 1.8 to the third is. So this is where you definitely want to go to your calculator. Now, all of this right here is just a number. There's no variables there at all. So I could go to my calculator right now, 7.5 times 1.8 raised to negative 3, and I get 1.286. And I love three decimals. That's what I always recommend. So 1.286 times 1.8 raised to the X. So now I have my A value, my B value, and of course, I'm raising it to just the X, which is what that generic form wants. All right, let's take a look at one more of this type. So once again, I'm gonna leave that four alone, and I'm gonna separate the two to the third squared and the two to the third to the X. Again, all I'm doing is I'm taking that addition and I'm giving them each their own base, two thirds to the X, two thirds to the second. It's multiplication, so it doesn't matter the order. Now, I have my B value, two thirds to the X, that's awesome. And now I can figure out my A value, which is gonna be all of this. So that's gonna be four times four ninths, two thirds squared is four ninths. Come on, I don't need a calculator for that. And four times four ninths is 16 ninths. So 16 ninths is my A value. Two thirds is my B value, all raised to the X. Again, I manipulated the function to make it look like the form I want. All right, one more of this type, I promise. I, you know, if, if you're like, I'm bored with examples, you can just fast forward. But I want to do as many examples as possible so you can see how this works. So once again, there's my six. I have my one half to the negative two, one half to the X. Oh, that's kind of sloppy, sorry. So once again, subtraction is just addition of a negative. So I separated that to two separate bases, one half to the X, one half to the negative two. And this is just a number. Now, I actually should be able to figure this out. So this is one to the negative two, two to the negative two, but one to anything is just one, and that's two to the negative two. But again, now I'm in the denominator with the negative exponents. That's actually gonna move me to the numerator where I can have that positive. 
So that's actually going to be 4. So I get 6 times 4 times 1 half raised to the x. And if you don't believe me, I always tell kids, like, listen, go grab a calculator, type in 0.5 raised to negative 2, and it's going to tell you 4. But hopefully you understand the exponential rules in terms of how I got that. And of course, 6 times 4 is 24. So there's my a value. My b value is 1 half, all raised to the x. So not too, too bad. Just make sure you understand how I'm using that exponent rule in reverse. All right, now let's talk about some problems that have multiplication. So a little bit different procedure here, so please be very, very careful because a lot of kids will use the same rule we just did here, but that's wrong. All right, so once again, I want A times B to the X. I don't want a 3X, I want just X. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to separate multiplication backwards by using a double power. So that's going to be 2 to the 3rd raised to the X. All I'm doing is using that exponent rule that says when you have a double power, you multiply them, 3 raised, you know, 2 to the 3rd to the x, 3 times x is 3x. I'm just separating it to two powers. This allows me to say, okay, there's my power of x of the generic form once, and 2 to the 3rd, oh my goodness, that's just a number. So I get 5 times 8 raised to the x. So now 5 is my a value, 8 is my b value, and I'm all raised to the x, which is what that generic form of an exponential function wants. Very easy to manipulate that. But so many kids do this wrong. Let me show you what a lot of kids do wrong. They'll do the same rule we went over in the previous problems. They'll do 5 times 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the x. That is wrong. Do not do that. That's how you separate addition. When you have addition in your exponent, two separate bases, multiplication separates into a double power. All right, let's try some more of these. So 3 is my constant. Let's leave it out in front. And I, remember, division is the same thing as multiplication of, a, of, a, of the reciprocal. So this is really x times a half. That's 1 half x. So I'm going to separate the 25 to the 1 half raised to the x. I'm just separating that 1 half and the x as a double power. And again, you guys should not need a calculator for this. 25 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 25, which is, of course, 5. So now I got my a value 3, my b value 5, my exponent of just x, and I'm ready to go. All right, here's another one, slightly trickier because I got some decimals, but don't panic. You're probably going to need a calculator on this one, but let's break it up first. So I have 2.8, and then I have 1.07 to the 1 60th, all raised to the x. Once again, division is multiplication of the reciprocal, well, 60th, 1 60th. So all I'm doing is I'm separating that to two separate powers. Now, unfortunately, and I would assume you would agree, I have no idea what 1.07 raised to the 1 60th is. So I'm going to go to my calculator for that. And 1.07 raised to the 1 60th. Really take your time. Make sure you type that in right. It's pretty easy to, you know, accidentally type that in wrong. But 1.07 raised to the 1 60th is 1.00113. Let me write that down here. 1.00113. Kept a lot of decimals there. But that is what my B value would now be. So there's my A, and there's my B, and there's my single X. And again, I'm in that exponential form that we love. All right, let's try one more. This is a double whammy, right? This one's going to be really tough. So let's go slow on this one. So I'm going to first leave my constant two alone. The first thing is the subtraction. So I'm going to separate that two separate bases. So I have three to the negative four, 3 to the 3x. So once again, subtraction is just addition of a negative, and that rule backwards gives me two separate bases, 3 to the 3x, 3 to the negative 4, and it gets multiplication, so it doesn't matter that I put them in the opposite order. It's totally fine. All right, then 3 to the negative 4, well, that's just a number. That's 3 to the negative 4. That's 1 over 3 to the 4th. You guys should know that. And 1 over 3 to the 4th is 1 over 81. So I have 2 times 1 over 81. But then I have multiplication. So I'm going to separate that as a single base, but a double power. Okay, so now I'm all ready to go. My A value is 2 times 1 over 81, which is 2 over 81. My B value is 3 to the 3rd, which is 27, all raised to the X. So A value, B value, all raised to a single X. I'm in that generic exponential form. Just took a little bit of manipulation. So I did the subtraction into two separate bases, and then this just became part of my A value. There's all my A value right there. Don't be afraid of 3 to the negative 4. If you need a calculator, go and do it. But again, it's just a number. 
And then the double power is because I had multiplication, three times x, so I separate that to a double power, three to the third, which is the 27, raised to the x. So that's it for manipulating. This is topic 2.4 of AP Precalculus, where we're working on with using our exponent rules to manipulate exponential functions to make them look different, but not be different.